I really, really love my Kindle Scribe. I don't know about you, but since I got it, I really don't use my Paperwhite anymore. But I want to go over just five basic tips and navigation uh, to get you started with this uh, for any new users out there. So let's get started. If you're like me and like things organized, the Scribe is a little bit different as far as organizing things. The biggest one is collections. When you first get your Scribe and you're used to your Paperwhite, it just shows you all of your books in your library here and nothing is sorted. So you have everything from PDFs to books all over the place. The first thing that you need to do is create a collection and bundle those together. So I'm going to show you how to create a collection here. So you're just going to go to the top right here, press the plus button, and then you're just going to say, you're just going to name the collection. We're just going to do test. Press create. And then it's going to ask you if you want to put some books or anything in this collection. I'm just going to say ignore for now because I'm not connected to the Wi-Fi. So from here, you're just going to select certain things to go in that collection that you created. There is a better way of doing this, which is on the Kindle app on your phone, which I will show that after this section. Next, you're going to see up on the screen my screen share of the Kindle app. This is really, really easy to do. So remember, you want to create your collections on your scribe with the Wi-Fi on, then it will sync over to your Kindle app here. It's really nice. So all you're going to do is go to your library tab, which is the middle one here. I have it up on the screen, but, and if you want to put multiple things in a collection, this is the best way of doing it. I personally don't recommend that you do it on the scribe because it is kind of tedious, especially if you're doing more than five things at a time. What you need to do is just hold your finger down on that particular section and just do select multiple items here at the bottom. So now you could select multiple items and then where you want to put them just on the top right here, you're going to put actions and then you're going to click add to collection and then add it to the collection that you want the folder that you made. This I think is probably the most misunderstood thing and it's very, very tedious. So that's why people get like a little bit like off because they're like, I just, this is just so slow. But if you use the Kindle app to move stuff into collections, if you have a lot of things or you add a lot of things, this is definitely the way to go and probably one of my best tips of this video. And then when you want to put the collections or have the view for the collection, you're just going to go to the top right here on this little three lines. And then down here at the bottom, you're going to see all and then you're going to see collections you're just going to want to click it to collection mode and then voila. So now you can see on my screen that everything from my collections is sorted. It is organized. The next section here is just settings and navigation. So any notebook that you're in, you just go up here to the top, push the little button there, and then just go to the three little dots and go to the settings. I'm just going to go through the main ones that you're going to want to use and want to see and just where they're at. I will not be going through all of them. So if you go up to the device options here, this one, there's a couple little areas that you really want to see. So if you want to put a pin on your particular Kindle, you just go to device settings here and you could put privacy and security. You could put a pin on there. I don't particularly do that, but that's just one of those things. Storage management though is probably another one that a lot of people don't know about that is really useful if you want to delete multiple things on your Kindle at one time. Now, as you can see here, I use 3.6 gigs of 50 gigs because I got the 64 gig, some of the operating system stuff in there. So if I just click into there, into the section, and then you could see the options I have to actually delete. I'm gonna click here, and then you could delete multiple things at one particular time. And then down here on the bottom right, it says remove. This one I think is actually the most helpful, but a lot of people don't really understand if they really want to clean up their Kindle and they want to get some stuff off of it. This is a really nice place to do that. And lastly, um, sleep timer, it's right there. If you want to set a different sleep timer, that is the section that it is in. If I go back here, the pen settings, this one, when you first get your pin, there is a little button on it if you got the premium pin that you could assign a different thing to. 
I personally have it as highlighter, but if you click into there, you could see the options that you want to do, or you could use it for. I use the eraser on back of the premium pen and pull, push it down to erase things. So I just have it as highlighter. I don't use it a whole lot, but I still do use it quite a bit. Last but not least, if you go to screen brightness on the top here, this toggle, if you toggle it in or out or on or off, this will show the lock screen covers for your books. Unfortunately for PDFs, it's just one of those things where it's just um, not that great. And it's one of those that a lot of people are frustrated by. I know that there's a workaround of doing that. I might do another video on it, but uh, it doesn't really bother me too much to not have covers on my PDFs. So these, these are the sections that are pretty helpful here. There's a lot of other things in here, but I'm not going to really take a look. If I go to the next page here, the writing toolbar is over here on the right hand side of my screen. If you double, if you click the little three there, and if you're right handed, you can move it to the other side of the screen. So I'm just looking over. If I move it over to the left side of the screen, it's not going to really work for me because I am left handed, which this works perfectly with my left hand. So the writing toolbar, I'm just going to do it with my finger. So then it's kind of out of the way. If you click in to any one of these, you can get multiple options and then you get multiple widths of each pin that you want to use. Same thing for this next one here. If you double click on it, not double click, but just click it twice, you could see how you want your highlighter to be heavy, thick, medium. This next one here is your er erase selection. I don't use this one at all because I have the premium pin. But if you didn't have the premium pin, you would actually would you would click there to erase things. This one here, which is the lasso, this is the one that I use quite a bit. You just essentially lasso something, it highlights it, and then you can move it around. You could copy it to other pages, you could delete it, you could do whatever you'd like. But this one I do find very useful and I like it a lot. And then of course there is the return and redo and undo type of thing. Dark mode is another one. If you'd like to read, this is really, really nice. But all you're going to do is just slide down from the top right to the bottom and then just click on dark mode here. It will turn everything dark. And I find that a lot of people do like this at night. It helps them with their, their vision. And it, if they put the warm light on, it really, really helps as well. When you first get your Kindle and you want to read, the first thing you're going to see is the main screen, which is very large. It's really nice to read and it's super comfortable holding the side here. I don't really read it like this because I usually enable the split screen view. But I'm going to show you how to create it really, really quickly. So if you click the A up, click the top of the, the screen up here, then click the A. All you're going to do is go through and set the format how you want it. And then you're going to save the custom theme at the bottom. So we're going to go through, if you want to change the font, you could change your font. When you click the layout, you're going to click the orientation up here at the top, which is automatically going to split your view. And now you think, oh, I don't have that split screen here. But down here at the bottom, if you click there, you will see it now. So now you have it enabled on the screen. So what you need to do is save it so then it's easy for you to go back. So since I already made some small changes, I go to themes and then I'm going to click down here at the bottom and save current theme. I just named it split view. So now if you did already make those changes and you want to go back to the regular view, you're going to click there at the top and I'm going to click normal. It's hard for me to see it through the screen. And then I'm going to go back and there's my normal view. And now if I want to go to split screen, I'm just going to click my custom theme split screen. So that's how you do it. So there you go. Here is my top scribe basics to get started. This is by no means all of them, but I hope this helps you out. If you have any questions at all, please let me know. I try to make it as concise and as easy as possible. If you like what I'm doing, I'm going to be doing some more scribe content. Please like uh, my video and subscribe if you haven't. Thank you so much for joining me today and have a amazing day.